A lot of students enter philosophy class armed with certain ideas about the difference between so-called facts and opinions. My students often assume the following. A fact is a statement that can be proven true or false. An opinion, by contrast, is an expression of a person's feelings that cannot be proven. I got this definition from Google, and you can find, you can find equivalent statements all over the internet. This notion of the so-called fact-opinion distinction is so widespread that I'm guessing it must be taught in elementary schools everywhere. And it may be responsible for many of the profound problems that we have in our society today. Although I think that the fact-opinion distinction is well-intentioned, it is deeply confused and unhelpful, and we should abandon it. Let me start with the definition of opinion. Now, according to the received definition, an opinion is an expression of a person's feelings that cannot be proven. Now, there's, I think, a number of problems with this. First of all, opinions are the same as beliefs. Those two words are synonyms, and we will clear away a lot of confusion if we bear this in mind. Second, beliefs are claims about reality, not merely expressions of a person's emotional condition. Beliefs make a claim about how things are. They are representations of what we take to be real. Some beliefs may be about my own feelings. I may take stock of my own emotional state and form the belief that I'm depressed or I'm ecstatic. But most of our beliefs aren't about our own feelings at all. For example, I may believe that two plus two equals four, or Paris is the capital of France, or stealing is wrong, or there's a ghost in my closet. Those beliefs aren't really about my feelings at all. Thirdly, some beliefs can be proven, even though perhaps some cannot. For example, we can deductively prove many claims in math and geometry and logic. And further, I can give you observational evidence in support of many other of my beliefs. Um, I believe that trees have leaves on them. Do you know what my evidence for that is? I've seen lots of trees. They had leaves on them. So my belief is not just some non-rational expression of my own emotional condition. The really interesting question in life is asking which opinions or beliefs are really supported by evidence and which are not. Figuring that out takes a lot of reflection and debate. If somebody makes a claim, you can't just say, well, it's an opinion. So it's your own unprovable emotional reflex. Wrong. They may or may not have decisive evidence in support of their opinion. And that's the interesting question. Now, let's turn to facts. According to the bad definition, a fact is a statement that can be proven true or false. But look, as we just noted, many opinions, that is beliefs, same thing, can be proven true or false. So according to this definition, Many opinions are, uh, are also going to be facts, and then the distinction all breaks down. Let me suggest a better definition of what a fact is, which this is more like what, how philosophers actually use the term. A fact is not a statement or a belief or a, an opinion at all. A fact is a feature of the objective world. It is a state of affairs, a slice of reality. Facts are what make our beliefs to be true or false. So, for example, let's say that it's a fact that the cat is on the mat. There's the cat laying on the mat, sleeping away. Well, if I believe that the cat is not on the mat, then my belief is false because it does not correspond to the fact that the cat is on the mat. My belief is misrepresenting reality misrepresenting the facts. On the other hand, if you believe that the cat is on the mat, then your belief is true because it corresponds to the facts. You have correctly represented reality. In short, facts are truth makers or falsity makers for our beliefs and our opinions and our statements. Keep in mind, even true beliefs are not identical with facts. It's a fact that the cat is on the mat 
even if nobody believes anything about the fact, even if there's nobody around to believe anything about cats, it's still a fact that the cat is on the map. So here are clear definitions of four key concepts and how they relate. First of all, beliefs, and I'm using this synonymously with opinions or statements that people make. We could fine tune some of that, but the point is beliefs are representations of reality, of how things are in the world. A fact is a slice of reality. It is how things actually are in the world. Truth occurs when beliefs correspond with the facts. And all of those three concepts are different from what I'm going to call justification. Justification is the proof or the evidence or the reasons that we put forward in support of a belief that indicate that it is true. Um, so it's how we get our beliefs to line up correctly with the facts is by gathering reasons for or against them. Now, your beliefs, that is your opinions, they may be either true or false. Again, they're true if they line up with the facts and they're false if they don't. Your beliefs may be either justified or unjustified. Maybe you've got good reasons for thinking that the earth is round. Maybe you don't have good reasons, but you think it anyway. Maybe ancient people had good reasons for thinking that the earth was flat, even though they later discovered better ones for reversing that verdict. Justification and truth are two different things. But we want to hold justified beliefs because we tend to think that there's a strong connection of some sort between justification and truth. Justification is the route whereby we get our beliefs to match up with reality. The bottom line is this. Whenever somebody makes a claim, we want to know whether that claim is true, whether it's accurately representing the facts, reality. And so we examine that claim to see whether it is justified or unjustified, supported by evidence or unsupported by evidence. And that's why the so-called fact opinion distinction is so problematic. That distinction can be used to shut down rational thinking and conversation. You can't just pompously make some claim and then say, that's a fact, you better accept it. You're gonna to have to give us some reasons, some supporting evidence, some justification for your claim. You gotta show us the money. On the other hand, you can't just dismiss somebody else's claim by saying, well, that's just your opinion. Guess what? That opinion may be true, and they may have really good evidence for holding that opinion that maybe you ought to uh, appreciate as well. The only way to find out whether their opinion is worth uh, believing, accepting, or rejecting is by examining the evidence, which is what we do in philosophy class. For more on this whole fact opinion distinction, I recommend John Corvino's essay on the Philosopher's Magazine website. He covers this more in depth.